Hi, Ian Roberts, Mastering Composition and Simplifying the Painting Process. So a number of weeks ago, I think I showed you uh, how I might crop a particular photograph. I'm just going to show it to you again. This is sort of a big wide angle view of Maine and then how I'd crop it. And then I just want to spend a second showing you what I'd eliminate and why. So when I think of painting this, I want to simplify it down into the simplest forms and get rid of all the details. So I'd get rid of the boat. And you think, no, but Ian, it's Maine. You've got to have the boat. The problem is you'd have to render that boat really well. And it would take a lot of attention. And I want to paint in kind of bigger, broader strokes. I'd also get rid of that thing, which I don't know what it is, and I don't want it there. I'd get rid of that rock, too, because it's going to really take a lot of attention to make sure that rock is working, that I've got the shadow in the right place, and then even when you get it, you're thinking, well, why is that rock so carefully put there? Same thing for this log. If I paint it badly, it's going to look dumb. If I paint it really well, it's just going to kind of be distracting. Well, what's that log doing there? I get rid of that thing, too. Uh, probably leave this, get rid of that one, mm, get rid of that thing, get rid of the skylights, and then I'd have most of the big things that I want to look at, big simple shapes, and I would be cropping it about like that. And then this is a drawing I did of it. And then here I'm going to do a demo of it as a painting. And you'll see the initial image is like this. That's just kind of putting in some washes be beforehand to get rid of the white canvas. And then the demo itself. And I'm mainly trying to just do big, bold masses. You'll see me mixing the color and putting in a mass, testing, mixing like that. Um, and then it all, you know, do, does that for a little bit. And then you sort of see, well, then there's the finished painting. So I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you at the end. So you can see me mixing this sort of greeny orange blue color here and it looks fairly dark actually, right? But against the ground, it really sort of pops. It looks incredibly light. Uh, and that's why the ground is useful. It just sort of takes us away from that white surface. And then I'm here mixing blue and uh, ultramarine chrome oxide blue and yellow ochre. And just, you can see, I just sort of test the color. Yeah, it seems okay. And then I put it in next to the building, which is where I really need the value shift to work. So I sort of tested it and then realized, yeah, okay, that'll work. And then I'm going to go for some water, if I remember correctly. So it's ultramarine blue, a little phthalo blue. I think there's a little bit of green, some white. And uh, so I've tested it, wasn't quite happy with it, too light, and then remixed and just put in and just one. That's the brush, that's the shape, put it in and leave it. So here I'm sort of going to the foreground. And you can see I mix colors straight off the puddle in the palette. I mean, rather than always going back. And this is going to be sort of warm colors for the foreground. You see I've got one color, actually I've just mixed some more red with it here. And you can see I'm just kind of varying it around so that it's not dramatic, but using the original color and just using that color with a bit more red in it to sort of make it work. I think this is the seaweed color. Yeah, see I've tested the seaweed color. You just saw I had it and then I realized, okay, that's it, big brush. And I'm just drawing in where I think the seaweed should go. And there's a lot of paint on the brush. Um, and I'm just kind of drawing it in there. I mean, once I've sort of got in, I'll, I'll go back in and put more paint in some places. But basically, I'm just trying to get the shape right. You can see I'm looking over at the photo as I go. And then this is the rock. So you can see I'm sort of building the rock color out of the old green color. So that's dioxazine purple, ultramarine blue, some cad red, and yellow ochre. And then, all right, there's the rock color. It's not dramatically, you know, same value, sort of. It's red, the green, you know, but it's like 
same value as the green, but big difference. And then this is a chromatic black, so that's thalo green, ultramarine, or alizarin. And rather than using black, which just always gives you black, if you don't mix the thalo green and the alizarin perfectly, you get it leaning green or, or red a little bit, which doesn't actually hurt. Uh, it's a little bit more interesting than just straight black. So that's like a chromatic black for all these shadows. And then uh, the next little bit, yeah, I'm not going to show the, the mixing so much now. You sort of got an idea there. I'm just starting to block in those posts in the water. So I'm wanting to get, you know, the tendency would be, oh, I just want to paint the light tops in, but I want to get all the values of the whole thing in, sort of the underpainting of the whole thing in, so that I can lay the light sunlit part of those uh, posts in on top of it and they'll work. There you can see I can just, I just tested a light blue for the mountain and I realized it's too light. I changed it and got it darker so that the building will pop. I think I changed that color later on down the road too. You know, just putting in a post and then a shadow from that post. And then now having laid in all that underpainting, I'm going to start putting the sunlit light part of those posts in. But you'll see that even though I put them in like this, I spent a lot of time adjusting the bottom of these brush marks so that they all start blending into the paint I've already got there, that underpainting. Yeah, you see I'm starting to push paint, getting the bottom edges of those things so that they're gradating up to the lit side at the top. And then here I'm just getting some darks, you know, so it's gradating from lit down to sort of seaweed color and then right down to where it's actually joining the water sort of pulling it up into the thing and then pulling it back down. So it just kind of rests there. So I just wanted you to see the paint quality up close because you can't really see it when you look at the whole image. I mean, unless you get up close. But you can see that it's nuanced color, close in intensities. There's quite a bit of glare on it because it's wet paint. And then there's the finished painting. Um, Pretty broadly painted, certainly painterly in the sense that uh, I'm just painting shape by shape by shape and adjusting the edges and the colors as necessary. So I hope that was helpful. In the past, during demos, people have said in comments, can't you show us the palette and the color mixing and can't you do a voiceover? So this week, palette and voiceover. Uh, please give a like if you enjoyed it. Share it with your friends, and if you want to get it as an email on Tuesdays, I don't send any other emails, you can click down below. Um, so I hope you have a great week, and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.